Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcasts. Becoming energy independent will require a massive deployment of renewables, breakthroughs in energy storage technologies, and promote massive electrification in the EU. But what are the developments, expectations, and societal implications of these technologies? And how can the EU prepare the ground for this energy transition? Stay with us. The EU is a net importer of energy. In 2021, more than half, 56% to be precise, of its energy needs were met thanks to foreign supply, especially of Russian gas and oil. EU countries were already moving toward more renewable energy, but Russia's war against Ukraine accelerated this trend. And for the first time in 2022, EU wind and solar generated more electricity than gas. Now... It's clear that the journey to energy independence is based on the deployment of clean energy technologies. And for the EU, this means biomass, onshore and offshore wind, geothermal, hydropower, solar, but not exclusively. To reduce its reliance on conventional fossil fuels, the EU also needs to invest in energy storage technologies, especially batteries that can keep energy to be used later, when and where it is most needed. And here, green hydrogen holds great promise. But there are also challenges that will require further technological advances, cost reductions and the right policy and legal support to integrate energy storage systems into existing energy grids. Now, for the EU to become more energy independent, we also need to talk electrification. This means replacing technologies that use fossil fuels, like internal combustion engines and gas boilers, with electrically powered equivalents, such as electric vehicles or heat pumps. But to do this, the EU needs to upgrade its electricity grids. And both digital technologies and artificial intelligence solutions will certainly enable smart grid management and optimise the way we produce and consume energy. So what can the EU do to prepare the ground? Well, the switch to renewables and their integration into existing energy infrastructures can pose technical, economical, environmental and societal challenges that need addressing. And we don't want to cut current dependencies only to create new ones, like the EU's reliance on imported photovoltaic technologies and batteries. That's right. Now restructuring manufacturing supply chains, sourcing raw materials, increasing materials circularity and producing our own clean energy technologies are key to reducing indirect energy imports, but also to contributing to the EU strategic autonomy goals and helping to put its net zero industry in the lead. With initiatives such as Repower EU to cut dependence on Russian fossil fuels, the EU is already translating words into deeds but it will need to continue taking action and involving a wide array of players to ensure it's an inclusive transition that benefits all. What's clear is that this is a dynamic and multifaceted journey that won't happen overnight. But an energy-independent EU would also be one that increases its economic stability, reduces geopolitical risks and moves closer to its ambitious 2050 climate goals. Want to know more? Check out Vasco Juedes Ferreira's full policy brief on the EPRS website or in our app. This is a European Parliamentary Research Service podcast. Thanks for listening.